Welcome to another episode of Marketing Tips for Doctors. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Hales. Today, we have with us Samara Beth. She is a luminary in the realms of event planning, destination management, networking, and public relations, celebrated not only for her exceptional talents, but for embodying excellence in every facet of her professional journey with a career adorned with accolades, such as the prestigious NACE Best Team event over $100,000 and the Crystal Icon Award for Best Social Event under $50,000, Samara's dedication to creating unforgettable experiences has solidified her status as one of Houston's top event planners, a title awarded by the Houston Business Journal after three years owning celebrations by Sumara. Her innovative spirit and meticulous attention to detail have enabled her to leave an indelible mark on both the industry and the hearts of those who experience her events. This combined with her robust background in public relations, marketing, destination management, and event production has facilitated fruitful collaborations with numerous Fortune 100 and 500 clients when working with a top New York City event production company, as well as a strong network of professional relationships across the globe. Beyond her tangible achievements, Samara's influence extends into the media where her insights and wisdom have been featured in Chow Bella Magazine, the Houston Chronicle, Herald Voice, Modern Luxury, and more. She has also shared her expertise through experiences and appearances on ESPN Radio and various podcasts, offering invaluable advice on sales, networking, and proactive engagement, illuminating the path for aspiring professionals. A champion of community service, Samara's leadership and commitment to giving back have been recognized with the Volunteer Spirit Award from her religious community, where she has led initiatives to foster community engagement and fundraising as vice president of the Sisterhood. Her ethos of excellence, which she describes as not just a goal, but a way of life, underscores her commitment to surpassing expectations and making a lasting impact. Samara Beth's journey is a testament to the transformative power of passion, dedication, and the pursuit of excellence. As she continues to pioneer within the event planning and public relations domains, she remains a beacon of inspiration, guiding both colleagues and clients towards achieving their own pinnacle of success. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I think I gave you my long bio. <laughs> well, very impressive. Tell me, how did you get into that? Not not everybody grows up as a, a child saying, you know, like, this is what I want to do with my life. So how, how did this happen? So I kind of did grow up that way because my mom planned conferences actually for near-death studies. And so I was very organized. I was the girl whose sock drawer was color coordinated her whole life. I was very um, OCD type A personality. So my mom had me helping organize her files, her office. I was selling books and tapes back then um, for the conferences. And then we always entertained. We entertained a great deal. I was very active in doing events. Uh, from proms to ski trips to all kinds of organization events and was always very active in that even back in high school. So it really is who I am and always has been who I am. My big start um, was in New York City in the 90s for a event production destination management company called Empire Force Events. Still there, still strong. Shout out to Jacqueline Bernstein and Robert Holsmeyer who gave me a chance before I even graduated from University of Maryland, I was a senior, and they gave me a chance when everyone else closed the door on me because I didn't have three years of experience. So the key is to find somebody who will give you a chance because they recognize the potential and then you just jump in and you work a lot. 
What is your experience working with the medical community? So it's interesting because the medical community was a big part of my clientele in New York, and then that continued on throughout my, my career journey. So most of my clients, not most, but many of my clients were pharmaceutical companies and medical companies, insurance companies. And so we would do their, their meetings, whether it's share owners and shareholder meetings or pharmaceutical rep uh, education or doctor's meetings for certifications where they have to just keep updating um, with their certifications annually or however it works. So we were there to help along the way. Now, when I started out, working with doctors and pharmaceutical industries, they didn't have all the rules they have now. So it has changed a great deal. We used to have a lot of fun with it. Now it's definitely, it's changed a lot financially. So so it's not fun anymore? It's not as fun. Um, anyone who's been around that long will tell you it's not as fun as it used to be. They've got a lot of caps, a lot of things you're not allowed to do. More things you're not allowed to do than what you are allowed to do. and. And a lot of that is for reasons, of course, some people take advantage and it was considered bribery, I guess, back then. So, yeah, so it's, it, it, but the thing is that if you're, if you're a doctor, not a pharmaceutical rep, but if you're a doctor, you might have different rules to follow. So you just have to research that, look it up online, see what your state laws are, what your federal laws are, and just abide by those and know that it might be a $125 cap for a dinner for a presentation with the venue, or it might be 150, you might be allowed alcohol, you may not be allowed alcohol. There's a lot of different roles. What types of events can doctors themselves host? So the doctors themselves are able to host education events. And I think that depending on their specialty, retreats really do tie into what they're doing because you can, Obviously, when you think of when you hear the word retreat, you think wellness retreat. That's where you know most people their head goes. Um, but now there's business retreats, there's networking retreats, there's other opportunities, there's experience retreats, and that's what it is: is you're creating a memorable experience, but you're also bonding and networking and learning together. Does it involve golf? <laughs> with doctors yes many times it involves golf because their tennis arm is not there anymore um yeah so you can do a lot of there's a lot of golfing events that are tied to nonprofits, and that's there's a, some tricks to the trade with all companies when you're working with businesses that have safety budgets and they have uh, networking budgets and they have uh, budgets for education and professional development, whatever they call it. There's a lot of different budgets that you can pull from. And then a lot of companies uh, require philanthropic uh, tie-ins um, throughout the year as well, especially by the end of the year. So I find that we do a lot of those types of events, team building or charity events um, at, toward the end of the year or throughout the year. And when you're tying that into your retreat as a, as a doctor, there's so many things that you can do to be creative and help children or elderly or those who are homeless. I mean, there's, it's endless. The need is everywhere. What are the best tips for medical professionals to host successful retreats that you could give? So some of the tips, I actually teach this in my course. It's called Pay to Vacation, and I teach it as a blueprint um, so that it's just easy for people to follow. And it's called the TRIPS Retreat Blueprint. And so it's giving you some idea of the things that you would need to have a successful retreat. Um, but the T is for transforming. You're transforming your business, but you're also transforming other people and their businesses as well. Because this is usually a B2B. It could be a B2C. You could have customers, clients coming um, to a retreat as well. Um, or it could be a B2B. So it just kind of depends on what your target audience is. But transforming them is incredibly important. And then also recharging those, those guests. Um, you want to make sure that they have time for downtime, for networking, to recharge, to have charging stations. You don't want them leaving and running to their room to go get chargers um, or to lose their phone. Um, and to make sure that they're having it as bonding experiences too. Like when you're recharging, you could do spa treatments together. You could do meditations or yoga. And instead of saying, oh, it's at six o'clock. If you want to go show up at the gym, go do yoga, make it a group thing where it's actually all in one place. 
Um, and also important, especially with marketing, is identifying your key, your key um, clientele. So um, you have to really know what your value proposition is. You need to understand what value you bring to the table. And when you're creating your value proposition, you're also helping identify who you're targeting in your audience. And so that's crucial because you don't want to target married couples, let's say, who are going through marriage challenges if you're targeting single single people. Um, you, and for mental health, let's say, you don't want to target people who are suicidal if those people are on a certain medication per se, but they're not on it because they're suicidal. So you just really need to be very conscientious on that. Um, so would you say that... Um... Retreats are a good way to introduce um, services and products that you may have as a sideline in your medical field. Absolutely. And so when you're planning out your schedule for your retreat, you want to make sure that you are marketing and people are getting to possibly use it if it's medical equipment um, or something that's you know new and helpful. It could be a medical app. Um, and then have people using it throughout that experience so that you're transforming them and they're remembering it and then they know how to use it. You know, how many apps have we downloaded that we download them and we never use them because no one really shows us how. So if you have medical professionals that are utilizing different apps or structures or components or equipment or whatever, really make that part of your retreat instead of just handing it out on the way out the door. Okay. You mentioned that you give a, a course about this. Can you tell us a little bit about your course? Yes, I do. Um, Pay to Vacation was designed to help those who, two, twofold really, those who may not be able to afford an event planner for every event, uh, or they have a list, um, they have a lead generation system, they're set in their CRM, and they have the people that they want to invite, and they just don't really know what to do next and they want to learn how to do it because they want to cross market themselves and really do this on their own time. So it's called paid to vacation because it quite literally is teaching you how to get paid to go on vacation. The cool thing about producing your own retreats is you get to actually choose where you're going and then employ your family and have them working the event and then the rest of the week you're on vacation in that spot. So we work hard and we play hard <laughs> We're at Samara Beth and Co. And not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. So it's a six weeks to launching your own retreat course. Um, so that means that we meet every week. There's another one. There's one starting in April um, when I get back from GrowthCon. And so what happens is we meet every week. There is some one-on-one -on -one time where we do strategy um, to talk about, you know, one-on-one -on -one between me and the client on what they're looking to do. So I have a better idea of where they're coming from during this because I might teach similar slides, but it's very, um, it's very personalized and customized when I'm talking to the clients. And then they're learning how to produce these retreats and run with it themselves. So by the end of the six weeks, they will have a tangible retreat. They might have more details they need to do, like the itinerary or whatever, but at least they have an idea. They might even change the dates. That's okay too. They know what they're doing. They have the resources, budget spreadsheets, all that. So we really are there together and then they can always move on to doing more one-on-one -on -one if they need to. This course is done virtually? It is a virtual course. So it's international. It's by Zoom. And there's a lot of bonuses, like extra benefits to doing these types of programs. Um, first of all, I let the people in my in my programs, I let them network. So what happens is if let's say we have a lot of people from wellness or doctors that sign up from this this interview today, and I have a special discount link, by the way, just for your listeners. And so don't let me go without telling that to you at the end here. Um, but you might have a bunch of doctors that decide, you know what, this is more than I want to do on my own. Do you want to collaborate with me, Rachel? Hey, Joe, you have a great practice. You're a chiropractor. You're, you know, a, a Pilates instructor. You're an occupational therapist, whatever. Let's get together. Let's do a retreat together. And it targets similar audiences that have back problems, neck problems, whatever, and then kind of come together and do a one-on-one -on -one retreat where they're getting some of the services, 
They're learning how to live with it. They're practicing with the tools and they're getting to meet other people. It's almost like a, um, like a group, a mental health group circle because people can say, oh God, when I move my neck, it da 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 da. They can talk to each other and as we say in Yiddish, betray each other's heads <laughs> with it. But you know, it's a really great idea because uh, it really takes the pressure off from you know trying to fill fill up the event. That's exactly right, Barbara. Cross marketing and collaborating is huge with lead gen. So when you're doing lead generation with lists, it's bringing more people into each other's email lists and newsletter lists. It's also, and then there's people that you wouldn't have known otherwise. You could have someone from South Africa doing it with someone from London, with someone from New York, and you guys all meet in Italy. And so, and it's also, it's building a community of people that can um, rely on one another and have that same experience. And you might go do this retreat with them and they become your best friends, business partners, or you do them together for the rest of your career or you decide just to be travel experience buddies. So a lot does come out of it. Of course, the number would tremendously vary by location, but you know, like what, what is a typical range of uh, the number of people that uh, one would need to make an event viable? Yeah, that is so dependent on the location, the dates. Um, it, it's impossible for me to say what it would cost because is something, I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. If you're in Scottsdale, Arizona in April and you're doing a retreat in April, you could pay $800, $900 for a sleeping room a night, okay? But if you do it in the summer when it's like 100 degrees, <laughs> um, as long as there's a cool, the pools have cooling, cooling um, elements. So if you're in an off season at a location, you could get a really great rate for the room and when you're when you're working with a resort or a hotel or a you know a hall that has sleeping rooms in addition to restaurants and uh, many breakout meeting rooms and ballrooms, and you're doing it as a full package, you're going to get a better rate than if you're doing a little bit at this place and a little bit at that place. They will negotiate. There's room for negotiation, and if you're off season, you will get a much better deal. So I would if you're starting out and you're you're really hesitant with budget. You don't want to pick New York City, you know, Times Square, New York City as your first retreat. You might want to choose um, somewhere so <laughs> Right. Like you could do an Airbnb. There's mansions and Airbnbs that have the sleeping rooms and all that. Just make sure you get there further in advance. You don't want to just wing it when you get there and show up the day the guests come. There's way too much prep that is required for these. Oh, I, I would imagine so. So, okay, you've worked really hard, you've organized everything, you've gotten these eager beavers to say, you know, like, I, I, I'm all for it, I'm in. How do you market, how do you market your event to get people to, um, to, first of all, to know about it, to want, and to want to go? Well, I guess I could say, Barbara, we're doing it today, right now. <laughs> <laughs> So the joy of podcasting, Yay. Uh, the repurposing of podcasting, and there's so much marketing out there. There's so much that can be done. Much of it is free or inexpensive. You don't need to put an ad out in a luxury magazine and wait for it to print in three months. You, What you can do is get on the podcast, LinkedIn, 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 um, if you're in coaching programs like I am and you, you, you and I met in a coaching program. When you're in coaching programs, you're not allowed to usually promote who you are in many of them. So just find out first if it's okay. But you can go offline and have a, build a relationship with that person, and then you can market your services. You just don't spam a chat or talk about it so much when you're in a coaching program. The other thing that you can do is ads on social media. Um, my main social media with my, my new brand, Samara Beth & Co, um, is Instagram and LinkedIn. So I will be using that more frequently and doing paid ads on those. Paid ads are whatever you wanna budget. You just set that up. And here's the joy of this, um, Barbara, is as an extra bonus, I throw in my marketing tips and tricks, and, and I have learned, my coaches are Grant Cardone and Elena Cardone, 
um, Elena and um, I'm sorry, Kane and Alicia Minkus, uh, John Lee. Um, I have such amazing coaches. Todd Hartley. He's these are lead gen geniuses. These are marketing geniuses, and I've learned so much from them. So you get to learn what I've learned. I share that with you. I'm also a 10x business coach for Cardone Ventures. So I have all the training through Cardone as well for marketing and sales. So that all gets integrated because it's in my head and I help everyone else use that and you guys don't have to pay the money that I pay for my coaches, you get me. Um, so that's one other way of doing it. And also getting the word out there, writing articles is good. You know, doctors love writing articles, right? So writing articles for your medical, medical publications, magazines, blogs, vlogs, it's really endless. And as you know, Barbara, we're doing a YouTube, a video YouTube. Here I am in, in Mexico at one of my retreat locations on the Four Seasons, and you can see the photo of my actual space. You've got an ocean and a palm tree behind you. So I know that you're gonna repurpose this on YouTube and people might be thinking, wow, I really think I need to be there right now. I need a break, but I need to make money. I need a tax deduction. How can I go about doing that? Okay, let's go. We're gonna go to Mexico and we're gonna do this, 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 and this. And we're gonna work this program for three days. And then the week after that, we are gonna do our vacation. My family is going to get to reap the benefits of me working hard or them working hard with you. And so, and those are all tax write-offs. Well, great advice. Well, you know, it really is a great food for thought. And uh, it's something that is, uh, you know, going to um, be very provoking for our listeners out there. Um, we also will be putting your bonuses in the show notes for all of you, your listeners and our listeners out there to, um, to you know, to check out. This has been, uh, thank you very much for being with us today. This has been another episode of Marketing Tips for Doctors um, with your host, Dr. Barbara Hales. Till next time.